we read together light of the world shine upon us and disperse the clouds of our selfishness that we may reflect the power of the resurrection in our life together amen our scripture reading is from the gospel of john chapter 15 verses 1 to 8 I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I spoke to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch that withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire, and they're burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. Amen. Jesus is speaking to his disciples shortly before his death and he urges them to remain in him. He compares them to branches of a vine, calling himself the vine, the source of life. Through John's Gospel there are many I am sayings when Jesus says I am the good shepherd, when he says I am the bread of life and here he says I am the true vine. He is the word I am comes in many ways from the name of God himself but when Moses said who shall I say is sending me God said I am who I am and so although God was so great that his name was almost too holy to be said when Jesus says I am maybe he's reflecting back onto the God who is who exists just the God who is the supreme being and so he says, I am the vine. He compares his father to the vine grower and us to the branches. And then he talks about pruning. And that if it's part of something real, if there's going to bear fruit, then there has to be pruning. Sometimes pruning seems too harsh. Some of you um, came to the barbecue at my house on, um, on Friday night. And now we have beautiful grass and nice trees around the outside. But it was a difficult decision before that started because before I remodeled the garden, the ground was bare with earth and it was a mess. But there was beautiful bougainvillea around the outside of the garden. And I said to the gardener, I want to have grass so I can use the place. So he said, well, you have to cut out the bougainvillea because that will take all the water and if the bougainvillea is getting lots of water it won't bloom so it will be no use and it will stop the grass from growing and I had to make that decision should I have the grass and lose the beautiful bougainvillea it was a big pruning and also there's another tree like a yucca plant which is there covered now in in beautiful shoots but when he cut back he cut it right back to the stump and it looked like it was dead before it was too big, it was going up to the electricity cables. It had to be cut. But he cut it just to a bare wooden stump. And I thought, he's killed it. There's no sign of life. And then after maybe one or two months, just at the edge was a little speck of green. And then gradually that grew, and it grew a little bit more. And I could see it was a leaf appearing. 
and then the leaf grew into more leaves and then the shoot came out and if you see it now you wouldn't think it was ever pruned so savagely it's becoming again a big beautiful plant but yet the gardener knew what he was doing and he cut it right back and it's the same with vines in my house in Spain I had a big vine over a pergola at the front of the house and in Spain the tradition was you always prune on the 1st of January that's when you should prune your vine and so you would go up and cut it right back to the wood and again it would look like you've killed it you cut off all these huge branches and all the leaves which had been falling down during the autumn were swept away and you just cut it right back to the solid dark wood and then the same as my yucca plant slowly it would shoot and then tend out tendrils and then as it was watered you would start to see the grapes being produced now I haven't been there for five years now and I have tenants at the moment but I don't know if they have done anything with the vine so when I go back if maybe there'll be no fruit because it hasn't been pruned maybe it will just be a big mess because nobody has been there to tend it I'm sure if you're a plant then being pruned is not something that you like certainly as Christians being pruned is something I don't think we like if if we feel we're being damaged or we're being cut or we're being hurt then that certainly is not a nice thing to happen but I believe that sometimes God doesn't hurt us but sometimes disciplines us and that can be difficult sometimes he has to tell us no you can't do this something we really want to do no it's not the right way to go no that's something you must stop even if it's something good even if it's something we've been doing for many years that can be one of the hardest things in the church where you're serving and for many years you've been the person doing the flowers or you've been the person typing the bulletins or you've been the person cleaning the church and you have to come and say to the people in the church I can't do this anymore I don't feel God wants me to do this anymore I have to stop doing that that can be very difficult but sometimes God wants us to stop doing what we're doing so that he can bring new fruit and new things can grow sometimes we have to cut back it's the same with the service if a church has been going and having a Sunday morning service for a hundred years it's a big decision to cut that service but that's what we did last year when we started with a Sunday evening service because sometimes something needs to be pruned so something new can grow so Jesus calls himself the vine and calls us the branches sometimes if we look at an oak tree we see the trunk and then the branches but with a vine it's a little bit different because a vine in some ways doesn't have much except the branches that's what makes up most of the vine so in some ways we're not just Jesus is the vine and we're a bit stuck on but we are part of the vine part of Jesus body here on the earth how do we bear much fruit it says by abiding in Jesus by remaining in remaining connected to the vine we've all seen plants where one of the parts gets broken it's not going to happen it's not going to regrow it has to be connected to the plant many years ago I was um, teaching in England and I was cycling through this park and I saw these girls gathering whole armfuls of tulips and I was incensed and there were people sitting round on the benches watching them pick all the tulips from the park and saying nothing and being a teacher I couldn't say nothing so I called these girls and said what are you doing you can't pick these flowers and they said to me are they your flowers they weren't being rude they were I realized when they said that they weren't particularly intelligent I said no it's not my garden but they belong to everybody you're not allowed to pick them oh they said we didn't know that we're very sorry and they started trying to push them back into the ground as if somehow they would start to grow again we can't do that once we're cut and disconnected from the plant the flower will never grow again 
The same with us and Jesus. We have to remain in the vine, remain in him. And how do we do that? Well, it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you and you will bear much fruit. So we abide, we stay, we remain in Jesus by letting his words remain in us, by meeting together, by praying, by learning from the scriptures, by learning from each other, by being part of his family. Again, you wouldn't be much use as a branch of a vine if you're a branch in Abbasaya which never connects in to the middle or a branch in New Cairo which never connects to the middle. We have to be connected together, so we have to meet together to have that connection. But more than anything, we have to have Jesus' words abiding in us. And so as we seek God's way together forward as a church, we live in a difficult time, as we always say at the moment in Egypt, for the last year and a half, things are uncertain. But we know that if we let God's word abide in us, and we abide in him, then we will bear much fruit. And it's often at a time of uncertainty and confusion and difficulty and even tension that people are looking for answers and people are wanting to know more. And if they see one particular political party which represents a religion and that's going to be the great answer to the problems and it's already failed, then maybe they will start to look for something else and say, if that isn't the answer, then something else maybe is. And we can bear much fruit if we let God's word abide in us. So let us do that. Let us look what God's word is saying. Let us look how we can remain together and abide in Jesus and remain as part of the vine. Because then, God willing, we will bear much fruit. And as Jesus says, my Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Amen.